this video is going to be about optimization. Notice I spell it with an S, that's how we do it in the UK and Canada, but Americans spell it with a Z uh, or Z as they call it, doesn't matter. So if we want to optimize something, what we mean is we want to maximize or minimize some equation. So let's say we've got something with like speed or volume or cost or something like that. We want to try to find out like, hey, what conditions give us the maximum or the minimum? which is really important because we can do this for a lot of different situations that actually might help us. So the main steps for optimization, I try to give you some sort of algorithm to follow here. The main idea is this. First, find an equation for what you're looking for. So what I mean by that is try to get it in just one variable. Then to maximize or minimize, it means you just have to find the derivative. So remember, so you're just going to find like uh, whatever that is, you're going to find the derivative. Then you're going to set that derivative equal to zero. Why is that? Because at the max or the min, remember, the derivative equals zero. That's what happens. So let's take a look and see if we can make it make sense. Because uh, this, this is just the idea. There's not much to it other than this in theory. In practice, however, sometimes it's a bit difficult. So that's why I want to show you a real example here. So we've got a situation where we're going to cut out small squares of length x from the corners of cardboard. So imagine this. This is a top view. We have a big square piece of cardboard, OK? And its length is 3 meters this way and 3 meters this way. That is a huge piece of cardboard. Um, I guess it can't really be 3 meters, but maybe it's like a scale diagram or something. Because this would be a huge piece of cardboard, I guess, right? Let's just pretend it's 3 meters. Maybe I should have made it centimeters instead. Should I change it to centimeters? Here. And what do we'll make it? One second. Here we'll make it uh, centimeters instead. Isn't that better? That's maybe more realistic, I suppose. Although 3 centimeters isn't very big either. Oh, well. We'll make it a small box now. So a small piece of cardboard, 3 centimeters by 3 centimeters. And what we do is you cut out. You cut out a little square. And that square has length x like this. You imagine you cut out this little square and this one and this one and this one. So now all that's left is a little piece that looks like, you know, I mean, it's a little bit hard to draw, but, you know, something that'll be, you know, something like this. See what I mean? Like you just cut out those little squares. here. It's not perfect, but I think you get the idea. Now you take each of these pieces and you fold here and you fold here, you fold here and you fold here. So you can imagine that. So you fold this piece up, fold this piece up and up and up. That'll end up making a box. That's sort of the idea here. Now, how long will that box be? Uh, what will be the dimensions? That's sort of the point here. We want to try to write out the volume of the box in one variable. Do you notice it's only got x's? Right now, there's a k. Remember I said the first goal, and very often the hardest part of the whole question is this first part, trying to get an equation in just one variable. So in this case right here, let's take a look and see what happens here. If I take out these pieces, how long is this box piece? Like How long is this piece right here? Do you notice that, like, in other words, you know, when I fold it, how long is this? Well, do you notice it's three centimeters, the whole length, but I take away x and I take away x. So does it make sense then to you that it would be, watch, three uh, minus, it'll be minus x minus x. Do you see that? Because it's three, its whole length here is three, but I clip out an x here and I clip out an x here. That's how long this piece right here is going to be. So because that's going to be 3 minus x minus x, but that's going to be 3 minus 2x. Does that make sense to you here? I've got this whole length here, 3, and I take out an x, I take out an x, so because I've done it twice, it's that. Well, how long is this thing? Well, it's also the same. Look, it's also 3 minus x minus x. So that's also 3 minus 2x. Now, how tall is the box? Because to know a volume, you have to know the length and the width and the height. So we know the length, we know the width, because it's a square, it's nice, they're the same. How tall is it? Well, think about this, how tall is this piece? It's the same length as this right here is. Does that make sense? Because this piece right here will be folded upwards. So this will be x. That's maybe the hard part. I really think this is the part that's not super simple for people to understand. So you just have to imagine this piece sort of folding upwards. Then it'll be the height of it. Because, you know, if you folded it back down, it would be this length right here like this, right? If I folded it up, then it would be straight up like this. So if that's the case, then how do I write the volume? Well, the volume, okay, the volume will just be length times width times height, which is going to be, let's see, um, I may as well do the height first. So I'll say x times the length, which is 3 minus 2x, times the width, which is also 3 minus 2x. 
So this is my answer for the volume. Except I've got to get it bigger like this. I've got to expand. All right, so let's do this. So V equals, and let me just uh, try to expand this thing here. So maybe I'll do it in black. So say so V equals X times. Now I'm just going to expand this binomial. So three times three is nine. So I'm doing first, outside, inside, last. So first times first is nine. Outside, so three times minus two X is minus six X. Inside is minus 2x times 3, which is also minus 6x. And the last one, minus 2x times minus 2x is plus. 2 times 2 is 4, and x times x is x squared. So there we go, I've got that. Now I can group these two together. I'm going to be done soon. So minus 6x minus 6x is minus 12x. All right, so let's keep going then. That means I have, so v equals x times... Maybe I'll start off with the biggest one here first, so 4x squared. Then I'll do the x here, so minus 12x, and then finally plus 9. Well, I just got to multiply this all out. So v equals, let's see, x times 4x squared is 4x cubed. I'll just make a better 3 here. There we go. x times minus 12x is minus 12x squared. And x times 9 is 9x. So this is my final volume. This is my equation for the volume. Now, have I answered the question? Well, they said, look, it goes 4x cubed, yep, minus 12x squared, yep, plus kx, and I have plus 9x. Does it make sense to you then that? What can I conclude? k equals 9. Do that. But the really important part was just to find out what the whole equation is. So you notice we got this whole equation for the volume. Well, that's good because now, in the next part, write out dv dx. I like this. Stop blaming your farts on me. I just thought of this because of the cardboard piece. <laughs> so let's first of all write out what was uh, what was v again? V is 4x cubed minus 12x squared. So I'll write that out. Okay. So v equals 4x cubed minus 12x squared plus 9x. Is that right? Yes. All right, so now i got to do dv dx. I hope you'll see this is actually quite easy. This part is easy. So how does the volume change with x? I just do the derivative. So 3 times 4, remember, because the exponents come in front, so that gives me 12x, and this here becomes a squared. This becomes one less. This becomes minus 24, just x. And then this right here just becomes plus 9, because this 1 comes in front, this becomes 1 less, it disappears. Pew. There we go. So we just got this. So this is my answer then for dv dx. It's 24x squared minus, uh, sorry, 12x squared minus 24x plus 9. There we go. That's dv dx. That's how the volume changes with x. Well, now we want to find out the value of x that will maximize the volume of the box. Well, what do we do when we want to maximize or minimize something? Remember what we do? We set dv dx equal to zero. Because if we had a graph of this volume, when we have the maximum volume, that's when the derivative is zero. Remember, that's because if you know, I don't know what shape the volume has, but some sort of weird shape, we know that you're at a maximum when the derivative is zero, which is when it's flat. So that's why we do this idea. I don't know what the shape looks like. Maybe I should erase it because you might think that's the actual shape. I don't know what it looks like. I don't care, actually. So I'm going to just set that equal to 0. So 0 equals 12x squared minus 24x plus 9. Now, I can divide everything by 3, I guess, just to make it a little bit easier. So let's see. If I divide everything by 3, I've got 4x squared minus... Um, I mean, is that a good idea? Yeah. So that'll be 8x plus 3. I think that's easier, isn't it? It's easier to look at, at least. All right. How do I then solve this? There's a couple ways of doing this. I'm trying to find the x's. There's a few ways. I mean, we can do I'm trying to show you ways to do them by hand, because you could, of course, use your calculator for this. Let's say method 1. Let's say uh, we'll do factorizing. See if that works. Do you remember how to factorize? Depending on if you like to do factorizing, I always write down what's a. A is a number in front of x squared, so that's four. B is let's see, that's a number in front of the x, so that's minus eight. C is three. And the way I think about factoring, I always say the product must be equal to a c, 
which is 4 times 3, so that's 12. The sum, however, must always be b, which will be, in this case, minus 8. Now, what number is multiplied to 12? Well, there's 1 and 12, negative 1 and negative 12. There's also 2 and 6. There's also negative 2 and negative 6. There's also 3 and 4, and minus 3 and minus 4. Do any of these add up to minus 8? Yes. You see these two do? So what I always do then is I always write down those two numbers. This is the weird part here. I always divide by a, which a is 4. I always reduce my fractions, so this becomes 1 over 2 and 6 over 4. Let's say they both divide by 2, so it'll be 3 over 2. Then I always read it bottom to top, which means I go 2 times x minus 1. So 2x minus 1. And the other one is 2 times x and then minus 3 equals 0. Now I use a zero factor theorem to tell me what to do here, so that means um, this thing must be 0 or this thing must be 0. So if I make this one right here equal to 0, so 2x minus 1 equals 0, if I do that, then I get, let's see, 2x equals, I'll move my minus 1 to the right, I get a plus 1, don't I? I'm just going to make my numbers a little bit nicer here. 2x minus 1 equals 0, therefore 2x equals, um, oops, I meant to say 0, that means 2x equals 1, therefore I have x equals 1 half. That's one of my answers. And the other answer would be, let's see, I should make the other one, make that one equal to 0. So let's work on that one. So 2x minus 3, that one would have to be 0. That's because 0 times anything gives you 0, or anything times 0 gives you 0. So I'm using the zero factor theorem. If I do this, I get 2x equals 3, so x equals 3 over 2. So do you see I've got two answers here? I've got 3 over 2, or I've got 1 half. Now if I'm not sure which one is the maximum or the minimum, because right, I've I got to figure that out, um, I could use a sign diagram to try to figure that out as well. Right? So I could actually try to do that. Um, yeah, let's do that. I'll just guess. I'll guess which one I should use. Let's say I guessed um, 1 half, let's just say. So I'll guess that first one, see if that works. So I'm going to be looking at f prime of x. All I care about is if it's positive or negative to left. So let's say I try at 0 and I try at 1. The derivative at 0, let's see, the derivative is this mess right here. Well, I made it nicer, actually. I made it, let's see, I could use this version right here. That's a nicer version here to use. I made this 0. I made this 0. Do you notice I get a plus? So I'll get a plus. That means it's going upwards. And then, let's see, if I make it 1, let's see, 1 squared is 1. 1 times 4 is 4. 4 minus 8 would be a negative. Plus 3 is still a negative. So that'll be negative like this. So, oh, that means I know it goes up, then it goes down. This right here must be a maximum. So now I know x equals 1 half is the maximum. That is the maximum volume. So that is the answer. Phew! That was one way to do it, by hand. Another way to do it by hand would have been just to use the um, quadratic equation. We can use that quadratic equation. We could do it that way. So we still start off with a equals 4, b equals negative 8, c equals 3, all right, so then I would go, all right, well then x equals minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, all that over 2a. Let's see, I would keep going then. By the way, I'd better separate these just so I don't think it's the same question here. There we go like that, whoops. Ended up doing a line right through my answer. There we go. All right, so if I keep going then, let's see, I've got x equals, hmm, I'll just erase this one. So I've got x equals, let's see, minus b, well that's going to be minus minus 8, so it's just 8, plus or minus square root of uh, b squared, so that's 8 squared, that's going to be 64, minus 4 times a times c is 12, all that over, 2 times a, so that's 8. All right, I keep going then, so that means I get x equals, let's see, 8 plus or minus square root of, and what's, 60, uh, what's 4 times 12 is 48? 64 minus 48 is 16 uh, over 8. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. Just got to make sure my math is right. Um, all right. Well, that means I have x equals 
uh, 8 plus or minus, and let's see, square root of 16 is 4, or 8. Therefore, I have two answers. I have x1 equals, let's say, 8 plus 4, which is uh, 12 over 8, which, by the way, reduces. Let's see, that reduces. Uh, they both divide by 4, so I get uh, 3 over 2. That's one of my answers. My other answer, x2, is, let's see, it's going to be 8 minus 4, so that's just 4, 4 over 8 which is equal to 1 half. Do you notice that I get two answers? I get x equals 1 half, and I also get this other one right here, x equals 3 over 2. Do you notice I got the same answers as we just uh, discussed here? I got 3 over 2 and 1 half. But of course you could then do the check with the sign diagram to see if it works. So you could have done this just with a calculator. All you'd have to do, that you don't put in dv dx into your calculator, though. You'd have to put in the original function here, this one right here. So let's go ahead and use our calculator. Let's do a graph of what v is. Remember, v is this, 4x cubed minus 12x squared. So let me just do all that. So 4 times x cubed, and I'll say minus 12x squared. Uh, whoa, something bad happened here. I'm still in the exponent here. There we go, minus 12 x squared plus 9x. There we go. So there's my graph. And where is the maximum? Can you see the maximum is here? So I go to menu, I do analyze and say give me the max please and it's 0.5. Do you notice? That's why I knew x equals 0 0.5 was my answer. So that was a faster way to do it without a cal uh, sorry, with a calculator or without. It depends though, you see? We did it by hand or you could have done it with a calculator. Either way, you've maximized the volume. So this tells you the x value that will give you the biggest volume. See, depending on what x values you do, you could get the volume being smaller, couldn't you? Look, this is the equation for the volume. That means, look, depending on what x is where, well, if you made x zero, that's a little bit uh, silly because then you haven't cut out any pieces. Then your height is zero. Do you notice? You have no height, right? And if you made your x is too big, you know, then you end up with a minimum volume again. That's because if you make them too big, then you have no length here. You know what I mean? There's some limits to what you make x. But in this case right here, making x 0.5, that gives you the biggest possible volume. We've maximized this. In other words, we've optimized it.